Okay, 6.3, standard deviation and z-scores. Variance is the average squared difference of the scores from the mean. We're going to look at a formula for variance. Standard deviation is the square root of the variance, which is the average distance of the scores from the mean. Population variance, the formula for population variance is as follows. This is the standard deviation squared is equal to the sum of the value minus the mean, all squared, divided by the number of values. So a population variance is different from a sample variance, whereas all you have to do is do the exact same thing you do in the numerator, but in the denominator you have to subtract 1. To allow for something that happens when you're calculating the sample variance versus the population variance. Now population standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. And the sample standard deviation is also the square root of the variance of a sample. Now where population deviation is represented by x minus the mean, and sample deviation is represented by x minus the mean as well. So we're going to be able to calculate this in a little bit. And there is an easier formula that we're going to look at shortly. Now, z-score is the number of standard deviations an observation is from the mean. Population z-score, to calculate that, we take the z-score is equal to the value that we're looking at minus the mean divided by the z uh, standard deviation. Sample z-score is the same thing. You take the value that you're looking at minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Population standard deviation, here's another formula that we can use. And the two formulas that we have on the first screen and the second screen are very similar to each other. And um, this is a much easier this method seems to be a little bit easier, and the differences between the two formulas doesn't seem to be very large. Now, note, if you know the mean and the standard deviation of data, you're able to determine the range of 99.7% of the data. And that is because from the mean, one standard deviation away from the mean in either direction represents 65% of the data. Two standard deviations represents 95% of the data, and that is if you know the mean and two standard deviate and you know the standard deviation, calculating two standard deviations on either side represents 95% of the data. Finally, the last part, mean and uh, st three standard deviations on each side, means that you can you can have you can uh, determine the range of 99.7% of the data just by knowing the mean and the standard deviation. Okay, moving on. Example 1. The graphs represent the scores on two quizzes. The mean score for each quiz is 7.0. Which quiz would have a greater standard deviation and why? Well, if you look at the data, this data is pretty close to the mean. All of the data is very close to the mean whereas this data has more values on either side of the mean. Therefore, when you're looking at this, you can safely say that quiz 2 will have a greater standard deviation because the data is more spread out. Next, the variance of quiz 1 is 1 1.5. What is the standard deviation? Well, if you remember in the note, it said that the variant, if you know the variance, you can find the standard deviation by taking the, that's right, square root. So the variance is equal to the standard deviation squared. So the standard deviation is equal to square root of 1.5, which is 1.2247, and that's for quiz 1. What would the quiz 1 graph look like if the standard deviation was 1.6? Well, 1.22, which is right now, is smaller than 1.6. Therefore, 
if I was to have a new standard deviation of 1.6, the graph would be more spread out because 1.6 is larger than 1.22. Now, what would the graph look like if the standard deviation were zero? Sorry, what would quiz one look like if the standard deviation were 1.6? And what would the graph look like if the standard deviation were zero? Well, if the standard devi deviation was zero, there would be no spread. Therefore, all the data would represent one number, and that would be the mean of seven. Okay, moving on. Example two. The increases in sound volume from a TV program to the advertisements were measured in decibels during a one-hour TV show. The results were as follows. And here we go. Uh, calculate the population mean and standard deviation. So it's indicated to you that it's a population mean. This is all the commercials that were taken from a TV program, which represents the population. Now, what you're to do is to calculate the mean. And once you calculate the mean, you find out that the mean is going to be all of these numbers divided by 18, which is 1.7778. Then you find the standard deviation by taking the data values, how many times those data values occur, and some of them occur more than once. And once you calculate those data values, how many times they occur, the frequency, you can calculate the difference in the mean squared. Once you calculate the difference in the mean squared, you can add those values up. So you take the data value, minus the mean, square that value, multiply by the frequency, and add the next one. And what we do is once we calculate all of this, we can determine the standard deviation. So we take the data value, subtract the mean, square it all, and then what we find out is the standard deviation is going to be 0 0.4361. Now, if we check our values, we can see that our values should be between 0 0.5 and 3.1. 0 0.5 being the lowest and 3.1 being the tallest or highest. And you can see based on this that the data values are accurate. So our standard deviation is accurate because don't forget, three standard deviations from the mean indicates the range of values. So we can check to see that our data is correct. And all of our data fits within this range. Moving on. Okay, moving on. What we did here is we calculated using the standard deviation the other method. That is, we took all, the, uh, all of the mean squared, we calculated that value, and we t took the sum of all the data points squared and then we subtract, we use the standard deviation, the other formula, to verify our results. So the sum of all the values squared is 60.48, subtracted by 18 times the mean squared, which is 18 times 3.1605, divided by 18, because don't forget this is the population, not the sample. And we get 0 0.4467. Well, if we look back at the previous values, we can see that 0 0.4467 is pretty close to 0 0.4361. So we can see that the two formulas are relatively close to each other. And as long as you show the work of which uh, formula you use, you will get the full marks. Okay, moving on. Next. Predict what would happen to the standard deviation if the first measurement were 1.5 decibels, predict what would happen to the standard deviation if the second measurement were 1.7 decibels. So what would happen when you change values? That is, from 1.7 to 1.5 means that you're moving further away from the mean, the average. Therefore, we increases the standard deviation. Predict what would happen to the standard deviation if the second measurement were 1.7 decibels. Well, 1.7 decibels 
means that we would move from 1.9 to 1.7, which means we're closing, moving closer to the mean, which decreases the standard deviation. So again, decrease and increasing the standard deviation changes uh, depending on the values you're given. The closer you move to the mean, the standard deviation gets smaller. The further, you weigh, uh, further away you move from the mean, the increases the standard deviation. So increases as you go further, decreases as you get closer. Okay, moving on. What would happen to the standard deviation if each measurement were 0.5 decimals quieter? Which measurements are within one standard deviation of the mean? So, here we go. What would happen to the standard deviation if each measurement were 0.5 decimals quieter? Well, the standard deviation would not change because the spread remains the same. Now, which measurements are within one standard deviation of the mean? Well, zero point to move one standard deviation of the mean, you add and subtract the one standard deviation. So 0.4467 on either side means that we're looking at 1.3311 up to 2.2245. So that is one standard deviation of the mean are those values. Moving on. Example 3. A car manufacturer tested the gap between the doors and the body of a car. 18 samples were taken. Their graphs in millimeters are shown. Their, sorry, their gaps in millimeters are shown. Determine the sample mean and standard deviation. So we need to do the mean and standard deviation again. So let's calculate the mean and then we can calculate the standard deviation. So this is a sample because we're taking a sample of the product. So we take the values and the frequency that each value occurs at. And once we do that, we look at the calculating the mean and then subtracting each value from the mean and squaring it. And once we do that, we add that all up and divide it by 18 minus 1. Turns out our answer is going to be 0 0.2196. Okay, so the standard deviation 0 0.2196. That is the spread of the data. Now, when I calculate these values, we find out when we add them up, that's the standard deviation. If we were to calculate the variance, all we'd have to do is square this value. All right, now, if we use the other formula, just to quickly show you, if we use the other formula, we find out that the standard deviation is 0 0.2197. So whether we use the other formula or this formula, we will still get a standard deviation pretty close to each other. 0 0.2197, or as in the last data, we got 0 0.2196. So we can see that the formula works really well with sample in this, in this particular case. All right. Now, Part B says calculate the z-score of a door with a gap of 1.6 millimeters. Calculate the z-score of a door with a gap of 1.4 millimeters. Compare it to answer B. The manufacturer rejects any cars with door gaps that are not within two standard deviations of the mean, which case would be rejected. So in Part B, which cars would be ejected, uh, rejected? Part B says calculate the z-score. To calculate the z-score, we take the value of 1.6 and we subtract the mean and divide by the number of the sample, uh, sorry, the standard deviation to calculate and that would be 1.6 minus 1.5333 divided by the standard deviation which is 0 0.2197 that equals 0 0.3 deviations so it's pretty close to the mean 0 0.3 deviations away from the actual mean now we calculate the z-score of a door 
of a door with a gap of 1.44 millimeters, we find out that when you take 1.4, subtract the mean, divided by the standard deviation, we find out it's negative 0.61. That means that in the first one, it's greater than the mean, and in the second one, it is actually less than the mean. So it's 0 0.61, negative 0 0.61 is, is 0 0.61 deviations less than the mean. Now, manufacturer rejects any cars with door gaps that are not within two standard deviations of the mean. Which cars would be rejected? Well, we need to take the mean and subtract two standard deviations on either side. Uh, subtract and add two standard deviations. And that's 0 0.2197. So when we do that, we get 1.0939 and 1.9727. That means, folks, that what we're looking at here is that any gap that is smaller than 0 0.0939 and greater than 0 0.19727 would be rejected. So if we were to go back to the question and figure out which ones are rejected, we would find out how many cars would be rejected. All right, folks, that's the end of the video. Have a numerical day.